Hi, this is Eric Ruderman from Northwestern University in Chicago, coming to you again from ACR Convergence 2020, uh, bringing you some uh, discussion through Room Now. Um, in this meeting, like a lot of other meetings lately, there's been a tremendous interest in the psoriatic arthritis space on measuring disease activity. Uh, psoriatic arthritis, more so, I think, than rheumatoid arthritis, is a bit of a challenging disease because there's so many domains of disease activity and it makes it hard in an individual patient to figure out what's going to drive your treatment choices. If all treatments were equally effective for all the different domains of, of involvement, it wouldn't matter, but that actually is not the case. And as we get new therapies, uh, it's becoming increasingly important to sort through all of that so we can understand what's the right treatment for the right patient. Um, that comes up in uh, guidelines uh, that's come up in the past in the GRAPA guidelines, and it's part of the discussion as the uh, next iteration of the GRAPA guidelines are uh, going uh, through the process right now. And one of the challenges is that there are a number of different um, composite outcomes in psoriatic arthritis, and yet it's not clear which one gets the information that we really need in an individual case to take care of our patients. So sort of stepping back, um, you know, originally psoriatic arthritis trials used uh, outcomes that were sort of poached from rheumatoid arthritis, ACR response, DAS response, and in fact, they still do. But it was recognized fairly early that they don't always capture the full spectrum of psoriatic disease, that patients with enthesitis, for example, may not have a very high score on a DAS score if it's focusing specifically on synovitis. And none of those uh, account for skin disease or nail disease. Uh, so one of the challenges has been to develop a composite that addresses all those things, and yet does so in a way that's applicable to individual patients. Uh, there are a number of these, the, the DAPSA and the PASDAS, and most recently, I think people have focused on a composite that is something akin to a, a clinical uh, remission, basically. Um, and and What's driving that I, in many ways, I think, is the treat to target concept, which you know, initiated in rheumatology, in rheumatoid arthritis, and is now moving into the spinal arthritis arena. And the idea being that if you have a patient with active disease, you continue to monitor their disease activity uh, and then either change therapy or escalate therapy if they haven't achieved uh, a target. Now that's, um, I wouldn't say easy to do, but easier to do in rheumatoid arthritis when you have a very clear cut target. It's either remission or low disease. There's some controversy over which, you know, which uh, remission uh, diagnosis you use, but it's the same idea because it really focuses on joint disease. In psoriatic arthritis, it, it becomes a little bit more complicated. So uh, an outcome like the MDA, minimal disease activity, which takes into account joints and skin and enthesitis and dactylitis and pain and all the different elements of disease uh, seems on the surface um, preferable. The problem is that the impact on an individual patient may differ. So some people are much more bothered by their skin disease than by their joint disease. And sometimes it's quite the opposite. And as a clinician, as a treating physician or a practitioner, we, we have to uh, sort of work on that with the patient because, you know, it, as in all other aspects of our care, shared decision-making is critical. So we have to understand what the patient wants. And, and one of the challenges is, you know, what's not controlled and how important is the part that's not controlled? So I, 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 there are a few abstracts at this meeting after I've sort of uh, wound through all this that, that sort of look at this. So there's a couple, uh, 884, for example, um, which looks at the Corona uh, database, the Corona Spa Registry and PSA Registry, 323, which looks at some data from the uh, PARC cohort, the uh, uh, psoriatic arthritis research cohort. Uh, and both of these look at the concept of what elements of disease are left if someone has achieved a target, if you will, uh, by a composite measure. Um, it, it seems that a patient in minimal disease or very low disease activity has the least active disease left in both of these. There's some data in abstract 909 at this meeting from the EXCEED study, which compares uh, adalimumab to secukinumab, um, which shows some of the same things that it, it looks at what's left. Um, those are important elements. The question is, 
how important are the individual pieces that are left? So for example, if a patient is well controlled in terms of joint disease and still has some skin disease, but is not terribly bothered by that, do we need to push on for more therapy? Do we need to change therapy or can we accept where we are? And is that different? And in my mind, it is from a patient with um, significant joint disease where I worry about long-term damage in a way that I don't worry uh, for skin disease. And so patients who have persistent joint involvement, particularly if I know that they have destructive arthritis, I'm not gonna be as happy leaving them there and leaving them alone. So these are issues we have to confront. I think a lot of abstracts at this meeting have begun to look at that. And there are a lot of abstracts with newer therapies where this is gonna come into play. So 2027 is the data on tildrakizumab, a new IL-23 inhibitor, a number of abstracts, 347, 505, 888, and others on guzelcomab, an IL-23 inhibitor that, was bit, that has been approved. And a question is, are these drugs gonna address the same elements of disease that we've treated with IL-17 inhibitors, that we've treated with TNF inhibitors, and that we're looking at treating with JAK inhibitors. There's another IL-17 inhibitor, bimekizumab, an abstract 906 is a phase two study from this drug that targets both IL-17A and IL-17F. Is that gonna change the elements of disease? Um, I don't have the answers to these questions, but I think they're important questions to ask as we move forward in care. Um, and, and they're not trivial because they really impact um, sort of guidance um, and whether or not you believe in guidelines and follow guidelines, the kind of guidance that we need on what treatments are going to treat which patients is important for all of us, e all of us, even if you don't uh, follow the guidelines strictly. Um, so stay tuned. The answers aren't here. Uh, abstracts at this meeting begin to look at this question. We'll learn more um, going forward, and it's an area we need to continue to look at. Uh, stay tuned to Room Now for more information on ACR Convergence 2020, uh, and I'll see you later.